On today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. Definitely got to flush the engine out after salt water. You got to run it till the thermostat opens up about a minute and a half, I guess. You feel the water getting warm when it opens. There is a flush here, which is good. Better than nothing. But the best way is still that way. Especially since the motor's cooled down by the time I get it back home. Earmuffs are still the best. It's a little warm. That looks a little better, huh? This is how you check the oil, because it's four stroke. Of course the engine's got to be level, up and down. And that looks like, might be a tad below the hole, which is still good, but I just ran it too, so. May not uh, drain the oil back into the engine. Look at that intake, huh? That's like a tuned intake there. High tech. Yeah, a fuel pump. There's a fuel separator. I wonder if anybody ever drained that. It looks clear. I don't see anything in there. That's supposed to be a water separator. And you pop that piece off to drain it if you ever get water. <laughs> this must be where you fill the engine oil. Yeah, it opened the thermostat. That's the thermostat. That's the regulator rectifier. These are actually anodes. If you keep it in the salt water, like keep it in the water, or I suppose even use it a lot, you're supposed to replace these. An the anode takes the corrosion before the aluminum does. They put them in hot water heaters too, but if you, if they're How shot, it do that? it's the material it's made of. I think it's magnesium. It just like attracts. It the attracts the corrosion, yeah. so it'll corrode this before it does the block. That's all they're used for. Yep, that's all they're for. Oh, 16. Okay. I think it's due. Let's see what number is on this thing. 1651087J00. The starter with the built in Bendix. There's the air breather. Fuse box. That must be the CDI or the ignition. Well, it's more than a CDI now, it's the whole ignition. God, they pack so much in this little case. A lot more than the two strokes used to have, that's for sure. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's a relay for the tilt. They give you a manual with it? There is a manual for this, yeah. Brand new one. There's a throttle body. That's your throttle position sensor because it's all fuel injected. High tech. Of course, this button when you're outside. So that's pretty much it. I forgot to point out that this does have a water filter separator inside here too where the fuel is. Come into my container and I'm looking around for my funnel and stuff so I could change the oil on the outboard. What the hell is that? Something came in here and took a dump while the door was open. Must have been too hot. The stuff that you see. This is the actual tool kit that comes with the boat. Be nice to see if they give the tools or enough tools to be able to change the oil. So it looks like they give us a drain plug opener aka allen wrench and i would assume those are crush washers for that drain a little flush adapter pull cord the old cheesy pliers that they've been given with the japanese bike since god the 70s i don't think they've changed this design since i had my ds125 <coughs> i need leverage the old spark plug wrench leverage Oh, that's some dirty oil. Yep. I asked Jeff if he'd supply me with the oil to do the job. He said the ticket was closed. But I specifically asked if this was serviced. And he said just before the guy put it away, but it looks kind of thick. I didn't open this for a reason. Because it probably would have shot oil all over me. Not bad. Not bad engineering going on there. Yet, we'll see if it drips down the side of the motor, which it's going to do right now. <laughs> Let me get my rag. 
pull that crush washer off here or sealing washer what is that it's like an aluminum washer gasket washer what would you call that anyway I could see why they'd want you to replace it because it's going in the water if there's any galling or anything I'd never reuse it I would reuse it if I thought it was okay but like if you really look at it you could see there's some galling on it very little just enough where because you're running it in water they probably don't want you to take the chance so they give new washers so I'll just put a new one on I'll save this as an emergency brandy new now it does say in the manual it says in the manual to change the oil every 100 hours and then every 200 hours change the oil filter and the oil but I'm not going to be using it that many hours so I'd probably just change it yearly just to be safe and seeing how easy this is to change the oil why not I don't have a filter wrench so let's see how hard that one's gonna be I'm not gonna overdo it clean off the oil with a little penetrating oil don't laugh I used to use WD-40 on my plastics of all my ATVs because it would put the oils back in it looks nice all the oils off it now that I think I'm gonna shove a rag underneath before I even start I gotta use some cheesy engineering and turn this into a strap wrench <laughs> I just fed the straps through the opposite way so I can use that as leverage and this will jam and tighten like a strap wrench looks like it's working not messy at all let me oil up my new filter that's right I'm using ATV motorcycle oil because it has SF rating which is what Suzuki manual recommends all right I didn't have a funnel either don't be hating this is like legit recycling and actually it's gonna hold pretty good like that so in the manual it says you use I think it said 2.7 quarts with filter I guess we'll see 2.7 SF type rated I'm gonna have to find out where I can recycle this oil I'm gonna pour it back into the containers because that's what I do to maximize performance off-road and we are not on road I'll do about a little more than half and see what we got on a dipstick right now it's actually showing a little under full and I haven't started it now let me put put a little more in then I'll run it Looks like it's like right on the full mark. <laughs> and I put three full quarts in there. Hmm. Something wrong. There's already a little oil on that O-ring. Should be alright. Got my trusty water muffs on. With one of these stupid retractable hoses. Make sure your muffs on good. Like, <laughs> like that. You can smoke an impeller within seconds. I've seen it happen if it sticks to the internal stainless steel thing. for about two minutes make sure it gets up to temperature and shut it off check the oil 
Look at that injector rail. Yeah, thermostat's open already. Right now, it's definitely between high and low mark, but the oil may still be settling into the reserve. So I would say that's good. And I use three quarts. Maybe there's a high and a low just in case it starts taking in a little bit of water. It doesn't hydraulic lock the motor. Hmm. So three quarts with the filter. Hmm. Moments later. Cody's Roadhouse. Chicken fried steak. Cheesy, cheesy <laughs> shrimp. Chicken fried chicken with black beans and rice. What'd you get? Oh, steak and potato. Steak and a rock. Oh my god. See? See, this is why this happened last time. What'd you get? I got garlic shrimp. And what'd you get? Um, not waiting. Someone took your meal. <laughs> 15 minutes later. Chicken fried steak, you finally got it. How is it? It's very disappointing compared to Granny's. Granny's got it going on, don't she? How about you? How was your overdone potato? It's right there. It's like a carcass. <laughs> My meal was good. Yours was good, right? Yeah, yours was good. A few moments later. Yeah, it's a redneck bonfire right there, boys. The following day. We tried a breakfast station. Last few times I wasn't so impressed, but Mama Sally's closed. I didn't know. My cup is empty. He does have neck tattoos. It comes from right about here. I got a buffalo chicken salad or hot salad. What'd you get? Supposedly a chicken sandwich, but it looks like chicken a burger. Chicken sandwich? Or what'd you get? Chicken Same sandwich thing. too? What'd you get? Chicken club. Those chicken clubs chicken are good. Club. <laughs> oh, I gotta get some ranch. Okay. It's not buffalo chicken. I guess I'll have to get buffalo sauce. Now it's buffalo chicken. How was your meal? It was pretty good. How about you? How was it? How about you? Thought it was delicious. Mine too. Mine was good. Oh, it only comes one. Oh, what the? I thought it was a pair. Damn. So let's see how this is going to fit. I didn't know they didn't come in pairs. You would assume they come in pairs. <laughs> That's kind of the best I'm going to get it. Shout to this. But it did. Seems like it might stay. Let's see what it looks like inside. That's not too bad. I may flip it up the other way. That's not too bad. It give me a little bit wider view. I guess I'll have to try it before I order another mirror. That's the side I'm more concerned with anyway. I'll keep it on that side. Just make sure you buy two if you want to. Yeah, I loosen up the U-bolts. Tap the whole thing down. That is more where it's supposed to be than having this hook lay on top of that. It could probably even go a hair lower. That's definitely where it belongs. Pretty close to the middle of those bunkers where it goes against it. Back to these lights. And a lot of very seasoned boaters say, don't put headlights. They're right, because I've owned boats long enough, but I did not specify why I wanted headlights. Basically, for docking, or when you're docked, and these will be pointing downward into the water because at nighttime you don't want to use headlights you're supposed to use your navigation lights and if you see red they have the right away 
If you see green, you have the right of way. If you're using your headlights, you might screw up other boaters. But the headlights won't be to be driving like a car. I guess I should have specified that. It's more for parking, docking, seeing your way. I wouldn't leave them on. You'd flip them on and flip them off. I have another question for you seasoned saltwater boaters that trailer or that have a trailer. I looked at a lot of pontoon boats and all these boats that I looked at, most of them, this main beam that goes from the hitch was rotted. The rest of it wasn't that bad. So then I said to myself, why would this be rotted? Thinking if the water gets in there, there's nowhere for the water to get out. This has a wire that comes out of it with a grommet, but it's too high. When you put this in the water, the water is going to stay in there. I basically fill half of this tube and stay in there. There is another hole here where the wire goes in, and of course, it's open here. But unless you let this tongue down, it's always going to have water in there. And most of the time, the tongue is higher than the rest. Usually the tongue is always higher when you store it, not lower. So, my question to you seasoned salt water boaters, should I drill a hole in the bottom of this? I think I should, to let the water out. Oh, look at that. That's something good for the boat. Definitely gonna need that. Stainless steel, oh yeah. Much, much later. Hungry Howies. I've never had Hungry Howies. Sausage and pepperoni. Buffalo chicken. And cheese bread. We'll see. It's okay, not great. Bread is good. Mm -hmm. Not bad. It is like Little Caesars, huh? This one's got a bit more topping. Pepperoni and sausage. No, I've been best friends. Hello. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.